what's up divas and what's up divos so you girls and guys already know it is wednesday so that means real talk wednesday and in case you're wondering about the hair this is actually really not really old but it's old enough it's over like uh let's see i want to say like a month and a half old probably a little bit older than that and it's by best lace wigs this is actually a wig i created using their kinky straight hair and i absolutely love it to like love it to pieces and i wore it on plenty of my videos so i am going to be attempting to straighten it with this brush straightener that was sent to me um we'll see how that turns out because i already tried with this hair and it was a little bit tangled so i decided to wash it and strain it and tangle because i had it in like braids and braids and then it got wet in the shower and in the bathtub um yeah that's not y'all problem though <laughs> but anyway so i tried to attempt and it wasn't really working out so i said well i'm going to rewash it and let it air dry straight like I did and that was today um last night I washed it and today I put it on so we're gonna see how that turns out but I guarantee you girls that it's probably not gonna turn out that great and I you best believe I will be giving my two cents of um acknowledgement with the turnout but yes so also other than that hope you guys had a great new year it is 2016 which means dish all the bullshit meaning get rid of all the bullshit the so-called friendships that you think are your friends but it ain't your friends get rid of the boyfriends or the girlfriends that's trifling and ain't worth your time and just get rid of all the excess bullshit because what it's a new year I'm going to get rid of the excess bullshit, meaning all this belly fat right here, because I do need to lose some weight. So, I said I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to try to get rid of it, okay? I'm going to try my damnedest to get rid of it, okay? So, anyway, other than that, let's get on with this real talk, you guys. Okay, so before I even go into the real talk, I did forget to mention, if you want a real talk video about your life situation, you can go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line, real talk. If you want to change the name of the characters in your email, like if your name is Jane, but you don't want to be known as Jane because somebody else might be watching that kind of knows your situation, you can go ahead and change it to like Sally Mae. Latanya, whatever the fuck you want to change it to. Okay, but just mention that in the email. But, so, let's get on to the real talk. And I'm going to try. I, I always have to try. Sometimes I get to do three, but it all depends on how long these are. So, here we go. Hi, Miss April. I am a new subscriber, and I have to say that you're my favorite YouTuber. Now, I feel so... So much appreciated because I do like to be anyone's favorite. So I do thank you, Diva, because I appreciate the love and support from everyone. I appreciate all the love and support. And I love being people's favorites, okay? Shit, why can't I be everyone's favorite? I mean, really, it's me. It's April. So anyway, I'm going back and I, I, I've gone back and watched every single one of your Real Talk videos. I love your advice and I can tell that it's so genuine. You can call me Shayna and I am 23 years old. I've been in a relationship for two years with a man. You can call him Nick who is 31 years old. Nick and I moved very fast. I got out of a really controlling relationship shortly before turning 21. A couple of months after that, I met Nick. We had an immediate attraction right away. It was so fun, and he made me feel so beautiful. We fell in love very quickly. Short, shortly after making it official, we slept together three times at this point. I discovered he gave me gentle to herpes. The way I discovered I had contracted it from him was just because prior to us being intimate, I got myself tested to be safe. I stupidly assumed he did the same, and he later came clean to having symptoms before we were intimate. Eventually, I sucked it up and we decided to stay together because we cared for each other a lot. I moved in with him four months later. He's on SSI and I have a full-time job. He also has a daughter, which I have played a huge part in her life since she was two months old. Because her mom is on drugs and couldn't handle the responsibility. One year passes and he changes. He blocks me from Facebook, sleeps with his phone face down under his pillow all the time, and goes out to clubs but never wants to take me. We get into arguments and I'm really not a weak emotional person, but 
He'll just hurt my feelings or my heart and I'll sob all night. And all he would say is he's trying to sleep. Go cry somewhere else. Whoa. I decided to move back in with my mom and that's when things got worse. He blocks my number sometimes for days and he hangs up in my face all the time. I love him so much but he acts like he hates me. When he sees bigger girls that aren't well put together on the street, he'll laugh and point and say, Shayna, that's what you look like, even though it hurts my feelings. Every time I tell him I'm not happy, I want to be done, he tells me no one will ever love me knowing I have this disease. I recently started going out with my friends on the weekends, and it feels good to get in and have other people show me attention. I'm scared to leave because I don't want to be alone forever, and I'm also scared to tell people this horrible secret. He tells me that I'm his heart and he loves me very much, but he doesn't feel like but it doesn't feel like love. I feel lonely. I'm 23. I feel like my life has been over since I was 21. Please help. Thank you very much if you ever get around to reading this. Damn. I'm going to just take a drink for that, y'all. I got a drink. Yes. And this isn't the normal drink, though it probably looks like the color. This is something totally different. This is strong. I made it real strong. Okay, so this is vodka. Um, it is moonshine vodka. You can't even buy it in a liquor store. So it's a moonshine um, that one of my friends made. And we had it for my grandson's birthday when he turned one on Saturday. Well, my grandson didn't have it, but me and my friend, we was drinking. Okay, so we was turning up on a one-year-old party. But it is strong. I had to put some orange juice in it because it is strong. So if I get a little tipsy on the video, then y'all already know why. So I'm about to turn on my fan right here because this shit is about to make me real fucking hot. And if I had some weed, I'd be smoking that. But I don't smoke on camera, but I would be hot. Okay, so. Yes, I do my daily things, okay. I'm a big girl. And it's legal here in Arizona. You can, you can go to the dispensary and get that shit. But this is strong. So, first of all, I am really, like, I'm feeling kind of heartbroken for Shayna because she is 23 years old now. When she met Nick, she was 21. He's 31. She already got out of a bad relationship, a bad controlling relationship. And then a few months later, she meets this fucking asshole who's 31 years old, 10 years older than her, and doesn't tell her he got freaking gentle to herpes until after he's already done fucked her and gave it to her. But... She feels as though they're going to be together forever, forever, ever, and that she is going to just accept the fact that she's got gentle to herpes. Now, Nick is truly acting like a jackass because he's blocking her on Facebook, sleeping with his phone underneath the pillow, you know, calling her kind of names, making fat jokes about her, you know what I'm saying, telling her nobody else is going to ever want her, love her. You know, she has gotten to the point where she has moved out because they moved in. She has moved out and moved back home, and now she's feeling lonely, and she's feeling the same way, like nobody's ever going to want her because of the gentle to herpes. None of her friends know her secrets. She's been hanging out with her friends and no one knows the truth about her secret and what should she do because she feels like well from what he's telling her he really loves her but it doesn't feel like love first of all Shayna Nicholas because I'm gonna just call him Nicholas not Nick because Nick is for the cool people you know what I'm saying you call him Nick when you cool with them and you like them right about now I don't like this motherfucker so first of all Nicholas is lucky to be still alive because had that been me that nigga would not have had a fucking dick to piss out of when he finished or when I finished with his ass. How you gonna fuck somebody knowing you got a dirty dick? A dirty dick. D D. Dirty dick. And how you gonna fuck somebody and give them some shit, some lifetime disease, and then turn around and treat them like shit during a relationship? Like, who are you? You don't really have a leg to stand on. Boo, you don't even have a job. You get SSI. So the dude gets, Nicholas gets SSI. For what, I like to know because I know they don't give SSI to people that got gentle to herpes. I mean, seriously, there's no fucking SSI for having fucking herpes, all right? Just bottom line. One of my good friends, she has herpes too. And she's a porn star, all right? She don't get no SSI, so I'm pretty sure he don't get SSI for having no fucking herpes. However, he don't really have much room to say much or have room to talk, let alone a leg to stand on. 
but you gave this female herpes, a lifetime disease. Well, they ain't even fucking cure that shit yet. You know what I'm saying? Herpes been around forever and they ain't find no cure for that shit. But you gave this to her and she accepted the fact. She accepted it because if she didn't accept it, she would have fucking left him a long time ago. But she accepted the fact and now here it is. You want to act up like it's all about you and you missed a goody good two shoe and you ain't got shit. You ain't the one that gave the disease. You ain't got, you just perfect all around fuck the perfect angel ain't give nobody no shit let me tell you something Shayna, you real fucking good because like i said that motherfucker would not even have a dick to piss out of the next day when i finish with his ass how you gonna give somebody some shit don't act like you know you don't know you got no fucking disease okay don't act like you're not burning don't act like you're not itching don't act like your genitals is not hurting that shit is not fucking cool no way around but then you pointing out making fat jokes and shit like that had it been me and he would have um made a statement about that's how i look when he's pointing out some fat chick i'd have been like well at least i wasn't the one going around giving people a disease dirty dick motherfucker i'm just saying that would have been me but you know what he don't really love you because if he really did care about you from the jump he would have said yo listen shayna I need to talk to you about something. I need to tell you something. I got a dirty dick. You know what I'm saying? I'm burning bitches. I'm fucking making them itch. I'm pussing them out. Meaning, you know, you got my shit is pussing. Whatever the fuck you had to do and say, just be fucking real about your shit and tell the truth. You know what I'm saying? It is a part of life. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying shun the person away like, oh, you got fucking herpes. Don't come near me. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't treat my friend like that. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't fucking a bitch neither. Okay, but I know how she how she feels and how it makes her feel and when she's stressed out Her reactions her body reacts to certain ways. So you know what I'm saying. I know how she feel. However She's been a real friend and told me she had to tell me shit because I don't really give a fuck You know what I'm saying and I'm not saying like I don't really give a fuck But you didn't really have to tell me cuz I ain't fucking you I ain't never gonna fuck you cuz I don't really go that way But you know what I'm saying as a true friend she told me her shit. So, I appreciate that. And, you know what I'm saying? As a woman, that's what you do. As a friend, as somebody you care about. If you are loving someone, friendship or in a relationship. If you care about the person, you can confide in them and you love them. That's like your family, your friend, your best friend. You tell them certain shit, okay? But... Here's the thing. I really, really honestly don't think that Nicholas ever gave two fucks about you. You were some pussy to him. And you know what's so sad? It's so sad to say that people, when they get in relationships, they got to lie and they got to hide a lot of shit. Okay, I'm not saying spill the beans and tell them all your motherfucking business about all your baby daddies or all your boyfriends or all the relationships or all your girlfriends or all the shit you did since you was born. I'm not saying that's what you need to do. However, if you got some drastic, drastic shit in your life that is going to be known, it's going to come out the box, be real about your shit and let that other person decide whether they want to be with you or not. You know what I'm saying? Because if you got herpes, you can still be in a relationship with somebody. Just when you have an outbreak, stay the fuck away from me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not fucking you. I'm not fucking with you. I'm going to fuck with you, but I'm not having sex with you. I'm not sleeping with you. Because the condom is not going to stop herpes, okay? So, therefore... He could have at least been man enough to say, listen, this is your decision. I just want to put this out there to you that, you know, I have genital herpes and I do get outbreaks. That's all he had to do is to be a man about it. And if you really cared enough about him, you would have decided either to stay or go. You know what I'm saying? That would have been your choice. But he did not give you no choice like that. So, therefore, what I'm trying to think and what I'm not even trying to think, what I'm trying to say to you is he's not worth your time and effort. You know what I'm saying? He's really, really not worth your time and effort, okay? Um, just because he held that secret from you. And to me, it was like really vindictive that what he did. Very, very vindictive. Because he knew he had herpes. He knows when he has an outbreak. But yet, he still decided to have sex with you. You know what I'm saying? Which made you contract the disease. Now he's telling you that nobody's going to want to be with you because you contracted this disease. Because of him. So that sounds like something really vindictive. Something really evil. And just something really, really mean. And for with that being said, I would not place myself in a relationship with him and feel like I have to be with him because I have herpes. You ain't the only one, Shayna, and he ain't the only one out there that has genital herpes. You're not, okay? 
There are many, many other people out here in the world that have way worse diseases than that, than that. But there are many people that do have genital herpes. And they are married. They got kids together. They are in long-term relationships. So it's not stopping them from having relationships with people. There is medication for the shit. But the most important thing to do is to be honest with whoever you're with. And let them know, like, yo, listen, I have something and I really need to talk to you about it. And... You know what I'm saying? That's common courtesy. That's called respect. You know what I'm saying? It's respect. And he didn't respect you. He didn't respect you as a person. He didn't respect your body enough to inform you ahead of time. I'm not saying the very next day that y'all got together. But way before y'all got intimate, he should have fucking elaborated with you on his freaking lifetime disease. You know what I'm saying? This is what he should have done. And you would have been able to decide on your own if you want to be with him or not, or if you want to sleep with him. But now, you know what I'm saying, you're stuck with something that's kind of like fucking you up mentally. You know what I'm saying? It's not fucking you up physically because you can still go on and do shit in life. You can still be in a relationship, but you have to be respectful enough to let that other person know, like, hey, listen, I have genital herpes. This is what I have. And, you know what I'm saying? I want to be respectful and I want to be the bigger person and I want to be the woman that I am and let you know what I have because I would never want to pass it along to you you know some people take shit really hard in life some people's crazy ain't your fucking crazy you know what I'm saying and like my man always says that to me and I always say that to him he always says I'm not your crazy what some other people's crazy is not your crazy and he's not saying that to me directly like oh we about to argue nothing he's just telling me shit we be talking we be t saying shit and you know something he is perfectly he's right other people's crazy ain't your crazy i could be fucking crazy and then somebody else could come along and be crazy or they could do some other wild shit that i wouldn't even fucking do and to me what he did is fucking crazy and then somebody else he could do that to somebody else down the line and their reaction may not be your reaction because to me you was calm and cool and collective about the, the shit however he get the next bitch and he do that shit too like i said she gon' she might cut his motherfucking dick off and he gonna wake up and be fucking dickless. You know that Jonah Bobby shit or whatever her name is, who cut the dick off. You know she cut her man dick off. That shit could happen to him. So like I said, other people's crazy ain't your motherfucking crazy. Okay? You gotta be real leery about fucking people. And don't let him fucking make your life a living hell because he gave you some shit, okay? Don't allow him to do that. He might have fucked you up somewhat, but don't let him fuck you up all the way. You know what I'm saying? Here's your time. You done moved out. You done moved back home. He be blocking your phone number for days. He be cracking fat jokes and shit. He be talking shit. And then he tell you he love you. Girl, please. That nigga don't love nobody but himself. And he really don't even love himself that much, okay? Because how did he catch herpes? Okay, by sleeping with somebody else. And, okay, all right, that person probably didn't tell him. Oh, well, so he feels like vindictive. I'm going to get back whoever else. You know what I'm saying? You don't do shit like that. That nigga don't love you. And let me tell you something. First, let me do this. He don't fucking love you. He really don't give a shit about anybody. He done gave you that old okie doke line. And I'm going to tell you one thing, Shayna. You just left a relationship that was very controlling. You young, 21 years old, you in a controlling relationship. Okay, fine. You might have been in a relationship for one or two years. Niggas do get controlling sometimes. I understand. I get it. However, you met Nicholas a few months after you broke up and got out of this controlling relationship. You were still vulnerable. So if you told him that, or it doesn't even matter if you didn't tell him that or not. He tried to pull the wool over your eyes. And he somewhat fucking did, okay? With his niceness, his representative. You know what I'm saying? When I say representative, what do I mean, ladies? I mean the person that you first meet in a relationship. Because if I come in a relationship to you because I'm an all-around bitch. I'm a nice-ass person. Me, talking about me, April. I'm a nice-ass person. However, my main character is I'm very stern. I'm no filter, non-filtered, okay? And my kids and my man say that all the time. I have no filter. I'm very non-filtered, and I'm just very, very blunt. I'm just very blunt. I'm moody. So if I come in a relationship, and that's the first thing you see, a nigga's gonna get scared the fuck away. He's gonna be like, I ain't fucking with that bitch. She might be pretty and all, but that bitch is crazy. I'm not fucking with her. 
So I'll let you see that a little bit later on down the line. You know what I mean? And that's just how everybody is. You don't want to bring your bad side out in a relationship and show them who the fuck you really are because then you ain't going to have no relationship. So this is what Nicholas did to you. He, he did the bait and switch on you, okay? He switched that shit up real quick after a few months after fucking with you and then that's when you found out he had herpes. Let me tell you something, Shayna. Move on with your life, okay? It's not the end of the fucking world. There's medication for that shit that can keep it in control. Yeah, you might have outbreaks, but if you take medication, the outbreaks are not going to be that bad. Just like I said, my friend, she's a porn star, and um, we tight, but she moved to L.A. I miss her to death. But you know, we, we like this, and we would party like rock stars, okay, when I moved out here. Only friend I ever had. Party like rock stars, okay? All day, not all day, but you know what I'm saying. We Enough. But when she would get really stressed out, like really, really stressed out, that's when she would have an outbreak. And I would have to tell her, just chill out. Smoke this. Smoke this, smoke this weed and just chill out. And take your pills and just chill the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? And then she would be okay. And, it was, and the, 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 the shit would subside. You know what I'm saying? It wouldn't be a long-term aching or outbreak so like i said there is medication for the shit however she's been in relationships she's had relationships and they are all very aware of it let me tell you something if a person really truly cares for you and really wants to be with you and they know that you have herpes because you have already explained this to them then they're going to want to be with you okay sooner or later in life because you're only 23 you're still really young you are going to find someone, but don't be so vulnerable and acceptable to so many things because people talk a lot of good shit. They tell you what you want to fucking hear. And I'm not going to just say men do that shit. Women do it too, okay? And I'm be the first to admit, okay, before I was in my relationship with my boo, okay, when we before we got back together because I've been with this man prior to this relationship that I've had. We have a son together who's 17. So we've already had a history together. However, before him... When I was dating, okay, because I've had dates, I've had a couple of dudes, all right, they tell me what the fuck they think I want to hear, yeah, I'm going to make you my girlfriend, you're going to be my girl, excuse me, I'm not going to make you my girlfriend, you're going to be my girl, watch, light skin, you're going to be my girl, I'm going to spoil you to death, oh, word, you know, I go right along with it, and whatever you feed me, I'm going to feed that same bullshit back to you, I'm going to tell you what the fuck you want to hear, that's why I hear a lot of times, like what my bestie says, even my man says to me now, that I be acting like a dude, I be acting like a boy, not like, you know what I'm saying, but I'm very confrontational, and I just don't take no shit, and when I was dating, you know what I'm saying? I did have a casual relationship or whatever you want to call it, intercourse. Well, not casual. Ooh, excuse me, intercourse. Not casual intercourse. But you know what I'm saying? I had a relationship with somebody. It wasn't even a relationship. I only wanted to do for one fucking thing. However, you know what I'm saying? I let him know. Like, yo, I'm done. I don't. I ain't trying to fuck with you like that. It is what it is. Because I... You think I'm stupid? You didn't tell me what the fuck you think I want to hear? Nigga, I'm about to feed you that same shit. I'm going to spoon feed you all fucking night. The same fucking bullshit. We're going to talk on the phone. I'm going to feed you that same bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So people tell you what they think you want to hear, okay? Just like Nicholas did, all right? And you heard it. You were vulnerable. You was acceptable to it. However, now you really know the truth and it's time to get out of it and move along. Don't let that fucking sorry ass Negro fucking pull you down in a rut so fucking deep that your ass cannot climb the fuck out of. Hang out with your friends. Find yourself a good friend that you already have and explain the situation to them. Take your time to get in another relationship because, boo, this one that you was with, you got out of a bad one and then you jumped into one with some fucking jackass and you were not aware of that. Now, had it been me in a bad relationship, I wouldn't have fucked with nobody for a long time and that's what I did. I didn't fuck with nobody for a while um, after I got out of my marriage and moved here. You know what I'm saying? However... People tell you what the fuck you want to hear, and that's just what the fuck they do. And for one, let Nicholas stew in his own fucking sauce. If he feel like he can go around, he can get any bitch he want, and then give them herpes, and kind of trap him, or trap them, because that's what it seems like he's trying to trap bitches to cling on to him because he's giving them this disease. Let me tell you something. I would let it be known that Nicholas got a dirty motherfucking dick. I'm just saying, that would be me, because if you want to be vindictive to me... I'm about to be vindictive to your ass. I will be calling the freaking health department. 
okay? I will be calling the Department of Health, Health Department, and letting them know who he is, what his address is, and what he's doing, and how he's giving out diseases. Because, let me tell you something, if you call the Health Department and you let them know that somebody is very aware that they have a sexually transmitted disease, and they're giving it out unknowingly to people, Fucking health department will come to your house, all right? So best believe I will be calling the health department on Nicholas's dirty dick ass and informing them of the 911 bullshit. That's just me. But leave him the fuck alone, Shayna, because you didn't already move the fuck out. Moved out. So move forward and move along and leave Nicholas and his dirty dick over there on the other side. Bottom line. And on that note, let Shayna know what would you do if this were you. Or what do you think of the situation? What is your honest opinion? How does this make you feel? Give her your advice. All right. Okay, so this one is called Real Talk Friend or Nay or Nah. N-A-H. Is it Nay or Nah? I'm trying to figure it out. If it's Nay, put N-A-Y so I know that it says Nay. That's how you pronounce it. I'm not really hip to all these trendy things these days. Hi, April. You can call me Marie and my friend Sheila. We've been friends, me and Sheila, for 10 years. For a while, I consider us best friends until I started noticing she wants to be in competition. She will come to my house and see that I bought something new, then within a week or less, she has it too. For example, I purchased a new iPhone, so she went to get one, but she got the wrong one. She ended up not paying the bill, so the phone got cut off. Another example is when I moved, I purchased a new living room set, so she did, a, so she did wait a few months later before getting a new set also. Then I got a new 50-inch TV for my room. So a few weeks later, she went and got a 55-inch. Sheila's husband would never buy her a MK bag, a Michael Kors handbag. So she would bring up every other month about, she's, she bets I'm tired of mine now, and asking me, am I ready to pass one on to her? I'd laugh it off because if I said what I wanted to, I would hurt her feelings. Sheila even writes statuses and comments under her own pictures on Facebook under her husband's name, pretending to be him because my husband comments under my pictures all the time. I know it's her because sometimes she will inbox saying, hey girl, this is me. Then we talk under his name. Then we're messaging each other under her husband's Facebook name. So that's how she knows that she's leaving things. I've started to not share any info concerning my life with her, and I go without texting her for days. She will then text me saying, hey stranger, haven't heard from you in days. So I would text back short responses to her. I've been, I even gave, I was text back short responses to her. I even gave Sheila a new coach purse of mine, wigs that I barely worn, and even ordered wigs and had them sent directly to her house. But now I think she's just a user and trying too hard to copy my life. What I like about her is that she is a nice person, but I can't understand why she won't buy what she knows she likes. April, it's gotten so bad that when she rides past my house because she picks up her mother a lot, if she sees the UPS, mail carrier, or FedEx men, she will call or text me asking me what have I ordered now. My husband bought me a brand new car almost a month ago, and I didn't tell her for a while, so I think she felt some way about that. The day after I told her, she rode past my house while we were outside and stopped for just a minute because she had her mother with her. Of course, she wanted to know what year and where I got the car from. April, I could go on and on about the things she's done because, believe me, there's plenty, plenty more. Should I continue to distance myself from her or just put up with this? She always says I'm the best friend she has, but on social media, she'll tell other women the same thing. Am I, am I being kept around as a backup friend? By the way, she never says let's have lunch or dinner, and we do nothing else but text, talk on the phone. Sometimes, and she comes to my house a lot. I'm 34 and she's 40. Please help. Hmm. Strong. Okay, so, Marie and her friend Sheila. So, Sheila is a copycatter. Whatever Marie goes out and gets, Sheila asks, gotta get the same fucking thing, okay? Or even better. Um... But also, Sheila ass is fucking dry begging. Do y'all know what a dry beggar is? Because my bestie told me what a dry beggar is. They hint around for you to give them shit without asking. You know what I'm saying? Or they hint around for shit without asking. Like, 
girl. Mm, I love that purse you got. I sure wish I had me one. You gonna hand when you handing that down? When you whenever you get tired of it, just let me know. That's dry begging, all right. However, Marie, you are being an overly nice fucking best friend by sending by ordering wigs and fucking having them sent to her house just for her to keep to have. You giving her your brand new coach purse. Let me tell you something. I don't mind giving shit away because I do it all the time, you know what I'm saying, to my best friends, to my kids, you know what I'm saying. But I ain't about to give you every fucking thing I have. Here's the thing. Y'all both got motherfucking husbands. Her husband needs to buy her some shit, okay? She might not be a copycatter to that extent. She might just really, really admire you. And sometimes people go about their admiration for others totally different than maybe you and I would, okay? She might admire you so much that she wants to be like you. So the things that you get, she may want to get because she admires you. And even though she is six years older than you, still she can admire you. Um, she might not be a copycatter. She just may admire you. However, do are you a backup best friend or is she a user? I'm going to be honest and say this. A part of me feels like the bitch is using you. Okay? And then a part of me feels like she's just admiring you. Okay? Like a fucking deep ass stalker. Um, driving by your house, checking out your packages and shit like that. Like, she might just be one of those. Um, I wouldn't say in the friendship with her just like that. What I would say though to her is talk to her. Because... If you're, I'm sorry, I had to laugh at this because I just got this text message from my, my daughter and my grandson is under the crib crawling around in his room playing around. So he's the fucking cutest thing. I just love him to pieces. He's fucking cute as hell. So yes, yeah, he's playing with his toys and he crawls up under there. He's so silly. But anyway, um, if it were me, I would basically talk to her because you may be taking her signals the wrong way and that may not be exactly what she means by it. You know what I'm saying? She might just really be admiring you. You might be her inspiration. And it's always nice to be somebody's inspiration. You know what I'm saying? Role model, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's always nice to. But sometimes people do get a little carried away with it and some people don't really know how to handle it and some people really don't know how to go about admiring somebody from afar or just in general so she might just be someone like that where she sees what you get and she admires it and she admires you as a person so I wouldn't take it so negative as to she's a bad friend however if she's not returning the favor and that might be a little bit petty too what I'm about to say but if you're constantly giving her stuff and she's not giving you anything but she's dry begging you you might want to slow down on giving her some shit okay like, it's always nice to give gifts to your best friends, your family, your friends in general. It's always nice. But if you're constantly giving, 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 and they're constantly taking, 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 but not giving you back. I'm not saying they got to give you what you give back or the same price code or the same amount. But if they're not um, basically appreciating you as much as you're appreciating them, then sometimes you have to put a hold on things and say, yo, let me just chill. Because... Everybody deserves nice things and everybody deserves a good friendship. However, there is some type of stipulations to shit. You know what I'm saying? So, my first thing is this. You need to stop sending her stuff and giving away so much of your stuff to her. Because as long as you continue to do this, she's going to continue to take it. And she's going to also continue to feel as though that's what you should do. A friendship is not based on giving, 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 and taking, taking, taking. You know what I'm saying? A friendship is about friendship. It's about trust. It's about love. It's about being friends, being there for one another. Not taking, taking, taking. However, if you feel like she's in a competition with you, because I do have a family member that's like that with me. She feels, I, I feel like this because I've noticed this. When I told her I bought a new car, did the bitch tell me she got two cars? I'm not even going to say the year and make of them because they're nice cars, but I know this bitch ain't got this shit. When I moved here to Arizona, my house, now you got a motherfucking house in a totally different state, but you in New York still. Like, come on now, bitch. You ain't even got a fucking job. You got evicted. How the fuck you buying a house straight cash, okay? And you got two cars. 
but you riding the motherfucking bus and you got evicted. So it's and I so I feel what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? I understand. And I and I and I love this person to death that I'm talking about, but she is the same. I I know she's in competition. And she also dry bags too. Um, you know what I'm saying? Hinting on my wigs and shit. Like, bitch, please. You can't afford them, then don't fucking be hinting around. But anyway, she do the same thing, but I just, and she's older than me too, but I just, you know, basically, uh, by a few years, not six, by, by a few years, but I basically just, I blow it off because I, for one, I already know she's a fucking liar anyway, so I'm not even about to confront her because all you want to do is lie and the person, the type of person I am, I'll get flip at the mouth and stop, just fucking stop and just cut you up, but she might be somewhat a little bit, little, little, teeny, teeny bit jealous of you and also at the same time admire the person you are so what I'm saying to you is take some time and write down pros and cons of this person you know what I'm saying and then have a serious conversation with her and let her know how it makes you feel if you Marie feel uncomfortable by the things that Sheila is doing like purchasing the same items as you and her conversations and her drop bagging then why keep it in why keep it in Tell her. Try to be pleasant about telling her. Don't be non-filter like I can be sometimes. But let her know, like, hey, Sheila, you know, I've been noticing certain things and I just really need to talk to you, you know. And if you feel like, I don't want to feel like we're in competition with each other because we're good friends and that's not what this is about. Don't say, but if you admire me, because if you say to her, oh, am I your you know, role model, or you admire me, I inspire you, that's like kind of sound like you little cocky, so don't do that, but I would have a friendly friend conversation with her, and just let her know, like, hey, I feel like, you know, you are in competition with me, and this is the reason why, you know what I'm saying, don't, don't really come at her too strong, but you might be taken in one way, and she may n totally not mean it that way. And you don't really want to end a good friendship over 10 years over mixed signals. You know what I'm saying? And that's totally mixed signals. Because like I said, she may just admire you. You might be her inspiration. And it's always nice to be somebody's inspiration. You know what I'm saying? Because that, that lets you know that you're doing something right. You ain't got to be doing every fucking thing right. But you're doing something right enough to where this person is inspired by what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, y'all both got husbands. Why ain't her husband buying shit for her? You know what I'm saying? Also, so she's leaving comments under her husband's Facebook page, under her own pictures. Because she sees your husband doing that. Now that right there lets me know that she's wanting the same type of lifestyle and relationship like you have. Which is more or less, she is admiring you. Now, if she's hating and she's jealous, then that bitch need to stay far the fuck away. However, like I said, I would really basically have a good conversation with her and just say, hey, you know, I've been noticing these things. But Marie, don't send that bitch no other shit. Don't give her, don't give away your good bags. If she wants a Michael Kors bag, let her go out and let her husband get one or let her get one. But I ask you this, please. Tell her don't get no Michael Kors bag with those fucking MKs all over the bag. Now, for those of y'all that have those bags that have the big MKs all over them, that's your choice. But I'm just going to tell you this. I hate those fucking bags. Like, seriously, I fucking hate them. Every motherfucker out here in Arizona has those fucking bags. With them fucking MKs all over it. It's like, were they selling them at the fucking flea market? Buy one, get one free? Or, what the fuck? Like, I'm so sick of seeing those fucking bags with MK all over them. I think the next person that I see with the fucking Michael Kors bag, they got MKs written all over them. I'm going to snatch the shit from them and just start hitting them upside the goddamn head. Now, no disrespect to you ladies who have those bags. That's your opinion. That's your fashion. That's what you like to rock. But me personally, I fucking hate those bags. 2AT. Alright? I don't even like the coach bags anymore with the C's all over them. Okay? 
those was back in the days. I just cannot stand those bags. Um, Gucci and Louis is Louis Vuitton and Fendi is something totally different. And I'll be the first to admit that, yeah, I got Fendi, Gucci, and Louis Vuitton. And I ain't about to give up my fucking bags. They can have the logos, the emblems all over them. But it's something about those Michael Kors bags that just really pissed me off. Maybe because it's already been done with Gucci and Coach and shit. So, I hate them. I just fucking hate those bags. 218. I hate them. Fucking hate them. But the other Michael Kors bags, like I have one, you would never know that it's a Michael Kors bag. I just don't really like to advertise too much. Um, but I'll advertise a motherfucking Louis Vuitton bag in a second. Hello. Hello. Okay. Mm. Yes, I sure will. I sure will. But I wouldn't be so hostile to her. Like I said, she just may really admire you and she might be coming across really strong. And the mixed signals might be really strong. So don't be so hostile to her. Have a good conversation with her. And don't feel like you're the background friend. If you feel like you're the background friend, then that's when you definitely have to take a look at things. Write down pros and cons of this person. And what is she really good for? Is she really a good friend? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you have to evaluate people. And it's sad to say, but you have to evaluate people at times. So I honestly would evaluate our friendship. The pros and cons of it. You know what I'm saying? And then have a conversation with her about it. Tell her how you feel. Because I know how that feels. Every time I go get something, you got to try to go get something fucking better. Like, okay. That would make me feel like you're in competition with me. However, it also make, make me feel like, okay, you really want to be like me. You want to admire me. You admire me. And I'm your inspiration. And with that being said, if you're her inspiration, then that's a compliment to you. You don't want to shun away a compliment. Because she may not have had any ill mannered manners behind it. You know what I'm saying? She may not have no bad intentions behind it. But her signals may be kind of mixed and really wrong. So I would have a conversation with her. So ladies, let Marie know what you would do if this was you in the situation. However, unfortunately, you know we're running out of time. And I wasn't able to do three videos. But... Let the ladies know below, Shana and Marie, what is your opinion? What is, what, how would you do, or how would you deal with these situations? Would you cut the best friend off, or what? Would you cut the dick off, or what? So, I'll see you girls on my next video. Stay diva and divolicious, and as always, you know what time it is. I love you guys.